Hello, and welcome to Building Apps for Microsoft Teams Connect Shared Channels. I'm Joey Glock. I'm a Principal PM Manager on the Microsoft Teams platform. And today we're excited to walk you through best practices for building Teams apps on these unique, powerful, collaborative contexts. So for the agenda today, um, my colleague Arun is going to talk to you all about how shared channels work in Teams in general. And from there, I'll talk about the nuances for how to both develop and manage Teams apps in these powerful contexts. So to get started, I'll pass it off to Arun for an overview of shared channels. Thank you, Joey. Hello, everyone. I'm Arun Das, a Principal Product Manager in Microsoft Teams. I'm excited to talk about Microsoft Teams Connect shared channels. Businesses are operating in vibrant environments where the connection with partners, vendors, and customers is a critical component of business success. On an average, business decision makers are working with 11 external partners in a typical week. They tell us that when external collaboration is optimized, it can improve visibility, accountability, and trust. With Microsoft Teams Connect, we are making it easier for our customers to collaborate seamlessly with people across and outside the organization. Microsoft Teams Connect offers two core capabilities. Chats powered by external access allows you to start a chat with anyone outside your organization, helping you have a real-time and secure conversation for faster results. Shared channels powered by B2B Direct Connect, on the other hand, offer a shared space for a more structured, deeper, and long-term collaboration with your external partners. May it be working with an external consultant or partnering with an external agency, shared channels help your team work effectively across our boundaries. Shared channels is currently in public preview and will be generally available later this year. Now let's talk about shared channels a bit more. Channels are where work happens. While standard and private channels provide members within a team spaces for fully open and private collaboration respectively, shared channels provide a collaboration space which transcends team and organization boundaries. Using shared channels, you can collaborate with internal and external partners like never before. To collaborate in an external shared channel, users do not have to tenant switch. These external channels show up alongside the rest of your teams from your own organization. You don't need to add an external partner to your entire team. Just add them to shared channel and avoid oversharing your content. You don't need to create a whole new team to bootstrap collaboration with your partners. Create a shared channel in your existing team and start collaborating right away. If you don't want to burden yourself with managing access to the shared channel, no problem, we have got you covered. Share your channel with the team and the channel's membership will automatically be kept in sync with the team it was shared with. So as users move in and out of those teams, they automatically get or lose access to the shared channel without you having to worry about granting or revoking access to individual users. On a shared channel, you can bring aboard an individual or an entire team. These individuals and teams can be either from your org or from an external Azure AD org. You can share the channel with multiple orgs. Now let's roll a demo to see shared channels in action. Here we're about to launch a new product. Using shared channels, you can create a shared workspace across multiple companies where we can share timeline updates, assign tasks, brainstorm launch strategy, and more. From the Manage Channel page, we can see the teams and members that have been invited to the channel, including external organizations. We can easily invite additional members to the channel using their email address, allowing everyone to collaborate securely like one extended team, conversing, meeting, sharing files securely, and more. When a third party uploads and shares a file to the channel, all stakeholders can open the document and co-author the brief in real time. With shared channels, users can be productive with one seamless experience in Teams without anyone needing to switch tenants. The team can initiate a call from the channel where everyone can join the meeting directly or catch up on the recording and chat asynchronously at a time that works best for them. As you have seen in the demo, Share Channel supports seamless collaboration with external partners. You can share and co-author documents in real time, schedule meetings, or call on demands. Collaborate on apps and partner with as many organizations as you need to. 
All of this is built on foundation of M365 security and compliance capabilities you know and trust. Back to you, Joey, to talk about apps and shared channels. Great. Thanks, Arun. Uh, now that we know a little bit more about how shared channels work in general, let's dive into some more detail about how Teams apps work in these unique environments. So the first thing to keep in mind is that until now, channels inherited their roster directly from the parent team that they lived in. So if you look at the diagram here, you can see Team Yellow, for example, has three people in it. And a simple way to look at our channel model as an app developer was to assume that everybody involved in all of those channels in those three yellow boxes were those three people in Team Yellow. Well, now with the power of shared channels, this can uh, dramatically change. So you have the option uh, as a user creating a shared channel to share that channel with individuals from within your own company. You can share that channel with individuals across another company. You can also share this channel with other teams inside or outside your company. So in the diagram here, you can see that Team Red and even Team Green outside company lines have this yellow channel shared into them as if it's part of their team structure. This obviously is a big change for app developers because until now, if you assumed that the membership of where you were running is just the same as your parent team, you'd have a subset of that information correct. So to that end, we've made some changes to our team's JavaScript SDK to account for this. And you'll see them here on this slide. Um, the biggest change to note is that the parent team's group ID, which you might retrieve to get membership again for standard channels, is actually going to be blank for these new channel types. So you'd be able to check the channel type property in the JavaScript SDK to see that we're in a shared channel, and you'll be able to account for that accordingly. So while the parent team's group ID is blank, on this slide, you'll see we've made a couple of new additions to help you accommodate for shared channels. We'll give you the ID required to make graph calls to retrieve all members who are added directly to this shared channel, as well as all shared two teams. So what I mean by that is, if you remember the diagram from a few slides ago, you'll be able to see all of the members that were part of Team Yellow, and maybe even part of those purple uh, individuals who were added to the shared channel directly. But then you also have visibility into Team Green and Team Red, of which this channel was actually shared to. With this, you have the full roster of information for a shared channel. And apart from that, our apps work very much the same. Our platform's done a lot of work to abstract away some of the additional complexities here, like authentication tokens for users across organizations. Um, but what you have to most be aware of is that your app is now going to be expected to retrieve this membership in a way that meets whatever business logic your app requires. So if you need the full membership, you'll have to use the graph calls you see on this screen and the JavaScript get context properties you see on this screen to go and grab that. So with that, let's watch a quick demo of shared channels apps in action. So I'm gonna play this here. And what you'll see is I have two tenants. It's actually a split screen. We have a tenant with the little red monster on, this, on the left, and we have the tenant with the little yellow bumblebee on the right. And we're gonna add a cool app that works on our platform. It's actually a shared coding app so that I can uh, run a coding snippet in real time in a tab and people can collaborate in real time inside that snippet. And what you're seeing here in this demo is a user add that app to a shared channel. And this is a user in the yellow Bumblebee tenant. They then share this channel out to the red monster tenant where another user comes in and can discover, hey, this is all this information being shared across organizational lines in a shared channel. And also, the, this team was using an app inside this shared channel. It's the shared coding app. And at the end of this demo, what you're actually going to see is that the red monster user on the left and the yellow bumblebee user on the right are collaborating in real time inside Teams, inside a tab um, that's hosted by this shared coding app. And what you'll see is when the user on one side updates some code, the user on the other side is going to see that update in real time, again, across collaborative boundaries. Uh, it's pretty powerful stuff, and it's a first for our Teams platform. OK. So we saw how tabs work in shared channels. We saw a good demo of an app that's already got this functionality built in. And we talked a little bit about the primary change in the difference between shared channels and standard channels, which is the membership of the channel. Because your app is going to have to accommodate for this, we've also built another mechanism for you. 
By default, we'll expect that your apps work in all of our channel types. That's standard channels, private channels, and shared channels. But now in our Teams app manifest, you'll be able to declare exactly which channel types you intend to support with your apps. So if you want to build an app specific for shared channels, you can. If you want to build one specific for private channels, you can. If you want to build it to work the same way across the board, it's possible. And you can also decide to disable either of these unique channel types if your app shouldn't be working in that kind of context. To that end, you'll see we have a new property here called shared supported channel types. Um, and you'll have an enum that you can use to define where you decide to support yourself in shared channels or not. Um, so this will be available to you very shortly. Okay, so we talked about really the important developer tools uh, at play uh, with our Teams platform and shared channels. Now let's talk a little bit about how these apps actually get managed. Because while maybe you're just interested in, in developing for shared channels, most of our organizations and our customers want to know how apps work when we're opening up a new channel type, a new collaborative context across organizational lines. And so I think of this as a very simple sentiment, which is it's basically house rules. And you'll see this called out in the uh, red highlight of this slide. And what I mean by house rules is if you created the shared channel, then your tenant and your parent team, the team that created the shared channel, those app rosters and policies will apply no matter where you share this channel externally, whether you share it to other individuals, other teams in your organization, or whether you share it across organizational lines. The same truth applies. The roster of apps available in that shared channel comes from the parent team and the policies that take effect for apps in those shared channels come from the parent tenant or the tenant that created the shared channel. So to that end, you need to understand that your apps, if you're building third-party apps, will need to be available in the tenant that creates the shared channel. And if you're a line of business app developer, that your line of business apps may run in shared channels, um, even if that channel is shared out externally to other organizations. As long as the team and tenant created the channel, your app will be there. Of course, if you recall a few slides ago, you have the ability to opt out of shared channels if you don't intend your app to run in these environments. Admins also have the ability to control their apps uh, and whether they get exposed in both their environment and in shared channels using our Teams app permission policies. Okay, so to recap, we've talked about how to develop apps for shared channels. We've talked about how the app lifecycle and, and management practices work for Teams apps in shared channels. Now let's talk a little, little bit about our graph API components in these channel types. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to retrieve membership for the roster of individuals active in a shared channel, you're going to need to use the Graph API to do so. Our JavaScript SDK will tell you the information you need to make the right graph calls, but you should be aware that there are a set of new graph calls, and I have them highlighted in bold here. These APIs are going to tell you all the pertinent information you need to know to have your app run successfully in a shared channel. They're going to tell you things like which teams these channels are shared out to or what your direct members of this shared channel are. And with the information we have called out here, you'll be able to derive the full membership, but not only that, but other unique contexts that exist in shared channels. So as you can see, we have APIs that list incoming channels for a team, list all channels of the team, uh, get shared with team info. So what I mean by that is remember that description of and team yellow creating a yellow shared channel and sharing it out to team green. You'll be able to get that info with this call. Um, and then of course, you can list the membership of the shared channel with these APIs, as I mentioned earlier. And on this slide, you can see a couple of other unique new APIs um, that are specific to channels. The first is uh, access checks. So you can check member access to shared channels just to see what types of permissions the current user is operating with. And again, you'll be able to get the current user accessing your app like you would normally through our Teams JavaScript SDK. You'll also be able to get a list of teams the user is associated with, which is similar to join teams, but also includes teams the user has access to via this shared channel. Now, this is pretty specific, but it's pertinent information depending on what business logic your app needs. And we have the right graph calls out there available um, to make these calls. So I talked about all of the new APIs that are available. Let's talk a little bit about what permissions you're going to need to call them. Um, and as you can see here, new permission scopes have actually been introduced um, to, to make the calls for shared channels APIs. Uh, and you can see them highlighted in bold at the bottom. Uh, depending on what your app's business logic needs, you can see the descriptions of these permissions. 
you'll need to make sure that an IT admin has approved access to uh, to the permissions that you define in your app manifest um, and in your web app correspondingly. So this is no significant change to how Graph API permissions work today. I just wanted to call out and highlight a couple of new ones that are pertinent and relevant to shared channels. Okay, so we talked about a lot of things over the last few minutes. We've talked about uh, how you can develop the tabs SDK. We've talked about how your app lifecycle will be managed over time in a shared channel. We've talked about all the Graph APIs available to you to retrieve cloud resources and get the context you need to run your app effectively inside of Teams. Now let's talk a little bit more about what the roadmap is and what the current state of our platform is inside of shared channels. Um, as you can see, and as Arun mentioned at the top of the call, Shared Channels is in public preview now. Similarly, we have a handful of app components available today in developer preview. This is our tabs uh, app capability, our JavaScript SDK. So all the changes that I mentioned throughout the con this conversation are now available today in our JavaScript SDK. Our manifest has been updated to let you opt in or out of shared channels and declare exactly where your app should run. You should be able to find that now. And we support Microsoft apps, third-party apps, and line of business apps in shared channels. Our team's working hard on bringing bots and message extensions and connectors support to shared channels over time. And you'll see updates to our bot SDKs, our uh, message extension services, and connector capabilities to include shared channels uh, in the months to come. So with that, thank you very much for taking the time to learn about this powerful new Teams feature. You're gonna find plenty of documentation on this and blog at post entries as we move towards GA, telling you how to build effective and useful apps for shared channels. And we're excited to see what you've built. Thanks.